if you were talking to a young group of people and you wanted them to achieve success, what are three things that you would focus on in trying to get them to elevate their effort to the next stage? Three things that I would tell a young audience or a young person? Young, a young audience. Oh, gosh. Um, maybe in no particular order, but the first one that comes to mind is find mentors. Find people who have achieved that which you want to achieve and emulate them. Because as a line that uh, a guy named uh, Jim Rohn used frequently in his career, he's passed now, um, R-O-H-N if you want to look him up. Um, he... Uh, Gosh, I'm trying to remember what his exact quotation was. No. But he talks about mentorship, you know, like uh, success leaves clues. That's what it was, right? Find other people who've achieved success and maybe they drop some clues. You know, even if they don't sit down and teach you, here's how I did it, just read their biography, you know, study them. Chris, it's, it's really interesting about the first tip here because when you ask somebody to be a mentor, they take it very seriously. Right. Like they feel that, oh, my God, I have a responsibility now to share my successes. And I do believe I have a mentor, um, our Trojan, who I love dearly, actually christened my eldest and, um, you know, very successful person in the space. But he took that so seriously Mm -hmm. and always gave me his time. Call me anytime you ever want to chat, you ever got an issue, just call me. And, and I, I think that's a very, very vital tip right there. Well, and there are two types of mentorship relationships, right? Yeah. Uh, Jim Rohn, I never got to meet personally. I would still call him a mentor of mine because so much of his wisdom has impacted my life and my career. So I can consume his learnings, his trainings from videos yeah. and books. And he's written a ton, right? Um, I had the good fortune of meeting and uh, sitting down with Brian Tracy several times. I'd call him a mentor. I've also studied loads of his programs. Okay. Right. Um, Jeffrey Gittimer, I worked closely with and I've read all of his books as well. The Little Red Book. The Little Red Book of Selling. Yeah. The Little um, the Sales Bible, the Platinum Book of Cha-Ching, the Black Book of Connections, the Green <laughs> Book of Getting Your Way, the Yellow Book of Yes Attitude, and a dozen more. Right. Um, so some of those relationships, Jeffrey Gittimer, that's a, that's a personal relationship. You know, we text one another. I very much value the relationship I have with this man. Um, Jim Rohn, I never had a personal relationship. I'd still call him a mentor, right? So if success leaves clues, then let's find people who've achieved that which you want to achieve and either learn from what they've produced into the world so far, or if you can, build some kind of relationship. Um, What's that adage? When the student is ready, the teacher appears. But in reality, the teacher is always there. They're just waiting for you to ask, right? That's a great quote. Like if you go around saying, will you be my mentor? Will you be my mentor? Will you be my mentor? Like, I think that's a problem if, you know, I think you need to have some kind of relationship with the person because it is, um, it takes a lot out of them, right? Those people whom I do mentor, they're the, they're the action takers. When I say, go do this thing, they go do it. And they report back like, I did it. What's next? And then I want to give them some more direction. But the people that say, what should I do? And I say, go do this. Well, and then they don't do it. I remember the first time I sat down with you, you, you said, from all my years of doing this, the busiest people always have the time to call me back the quickest. Yes. It's so funny. Right? When, when you're doing your interviews and stuff, you got your list. Right. And, and uh, I don't think that's by coincidence. No. And doing this for 20 years and interviewing a lot of people before every single keynote, this trend is... Con- it continues, right? The, the, the top earners in the company, uh, let's, let's use sales as an organize, or as a metric, right? The, the top salespeople, if I were to interview top salespeople, middle salespeople, and low performing salespeople, and I'd say, hey, give me a list of those folks. I want to talk to some of them. The top ones always call back first and always book their meeting right away and always have 15, 20 minutes to chat. The middle ones will, will often book it and usually have to move it. <laughs> And the bottom ones, they are, so I'm so busy. I'm busy doing home. nothing. <laughs> I don't know. But they might be, but in their mind, in, in their defense, they might feel very strongly that they're really busy and they don't have the time for this. I've noticed that when I make time, 
heck, when I make time to speak with you, you know, you you really interest me intellectually, um, your your ethics, your view of the world, uh, your your intellect, your knowledge of the financial services industry in Canada, your connections to other fascinating people. All those I find very intellectually attra attractive, right? So. If you said, hey, Chris, I got this thing. Let's sit down and you know do a podcast interview. I had to move some things to make this happen, but I'm making it happen because I want That's to. That's appreciated. Right? I, want, I wanted to do this. Yeah. Um, and I've noticed that when you have those conversations with people who are ex achieving great things in their life, they will make time for those as well. They're like, you know what? There's value in this. Let's go have a chat. Um, yeah, not everyone thinks there's an opportunity in meeting a new person or deepening a relationship. But I think that's so that's, that's a big that's a big number one. And yeah. the other two? Um, well, the second one, I suppose, is related to the first. When I said, find people who've achieved that which you want to achieve and then emulate them. So I guess the second one, if we're doing reverse order, is figure out what you want to achieve. Like what, what do you want to do? I used to be an executive search. I would find uh, surgical, medical, and biotech salespeople for surgical, medical, and biotech companies. Uh, prior to that, I was selling surgical equipment to about half the hospitals in, in the province of Ontario. And um, if you ask someone, you know, wh what are you looking for? I just need a job. That's really challenging to place that person. Because we would be charging between 25 and 33% of first year, reasonable first year compensation to find that person. So the company that's <laughs> hiring the person, we would charge them roughly a quarter of their first year earnings. It doesn't cost candidate anything, right? Cost the employer. Um, but the employer would pay 25 to 33% of a first year salary to go find the talent for that role. And if I'm talking to someone, I say, what do you want to do? Anything. I'm wide open. That's not attractive to an employer. It's not attractive to a mentor either. A mentor is like, I don't know what to do with this, right? Yeah. I've had people email and say, Chris, I saw you give a speech. Um, you know, can you give me some success principles and tell me where I should be looking for a job? No. But if, but if someone sends me an email and says, I'd love to work at this company because this thing really intrigues me. I love their innovation stuff. I've researched the heck out of them. It's my absolute dream job. I wake up dreaming of that company. It would be incredible to work there. And I look at my, you know, my list of contacts and I notice that someone I really respect highly works there. And I could probably make an introduction for them. But someone has to really want to do it, right? They had to define it. Yeah. So um, you find mentors, but also figure out what you, would, what you want to achieve, um, which is hard. I mean, at 20, I didn't have a clue. 25, I don't think I really knew either. Takes I still a while. don't. Takes a while. <laughs> <laughs> what is that line? Some of the... Most interesting 40 year olds I know still don't. <laughs> Probably 50 year olds too. Yeah. Yeah. And the third? What's the third thing I would tell a young person? Let me think about this. We've got the mentorship piece down. Read. Read, 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 read. Learn. Take, learn. Like, and if it's not reading words on a page, then listen to them in Audible. If it's not listening to them in Audible, then watch them on a YouTube screen. Um, yeah, the, the piece of advice that I received loud and clear in my 20s was the most successful people have the biggest libraries. And when I go to their houses, they often have a room, like a home office, but dedicated just a full of books. Mm -hmm. And um, I find that the oldest texts are some of the most incredible. You look at The Richest Man in Babylon written in the 1800s or um, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill yeah. in the early 1900s. You know, um, a lot of the current self-development texts are actually based, on based that, upon right? a lot of those. Um, but I also like learning, you know, really contemporary. Like what's something that someone achieved two years ago and they've written about it? I want to learn that. Um, so, yeah, I would say... When I said the word read, I suppose it is learn. Um, some people finish high school and say, well, that's it for reading books. You got to keep on learning. You know? Like I always believe if you're not learning, you're dying. So you better oh, gosh, start yeah. grasping at what's new, what's evolving, and what what trends are out there to be on top of it. I think it's it's only prudent to do that. 